We're here. If you can. Yeah, let's go like this. So we're here at the Mobile World Congress here in Barcelona. And who are you? Hi, I'm Janko Mirsik Vlogel. I'm CEO of Planet Computers. And uh, who are you? I'm David Guidi, CTO of Planet Computers. Hey. Hi there, I'm uh, Robin Parker, CEO and CFO of Planet Computers. So at Planet Computers, you are launching the Ge Gemini, right? That's right, we're launching the Gemini PDA. This is it. It's, uh, yeah, you can see the different angles. So this is, uh, this is the clamshell uh, PDA. So it's got a full integrated keyboard. So the keyboard comes with the device. You can see uh, how it looks. It's a fully tactile keyboard, so it's very, very nice to touch. Uh, you can try. And this is a, fun this is a and then you can mechanical prototype. Yeah, and right? you can close it so you can see that there's a there's a very special hinge. You can close it and it tucks away the keyboard nicely. And it's a metal uh, metal design. So it's very very easy to uh, it's very protective and easy to close. So you can open and close. And uh, very large screen, ultra wide display. So this will be 2880 pixels horizontal by 1440 pixels vertical. So two by one ratio. Uh, that's very nice. uh, is that the that similar display that LG just talked about? Yes, right? it's those kind of displays that are coming out because of the virtual reality glasses. So you're gonna have like two by one, which fits very nicely with these type of... Uh, it's also maybe optimized for the next generation uh, display factory. They can cut the glass you know, easily in this uh, size. This is now, because of the VR glasses, we can get this form factor again, which we've been missing for quite a while. So. And uh, the Italian filmmaker, the LG press conference said this is the best way to experience movies. Uh, it's certainly a good way to experience uh, movies because you can have some area on the side for control as well. So it's a, it's a good thing. That's cool. So uh, what's the challenge you have right now? What, what kind of uh, technological things do you have to do to get this out? How soon? You're the yeah, CTO? Well, yes, <laughs> well, a few things. Uh, first of all, we have to complete the campaign. That's the first step. Yeah. And then we have basically to create everything. So we have to uh, find the right board. Um, we are uh, talking with several. We have to uh, write the, have the right software, so a number of applications will be updated uh, to be uh, to use the fully wide uh, landscape mode. And uh, we have just to make it right. It has to be, you know, there is a lot of um, expectation about this device because the old Scion was so much loved by the people. So we have just to make it right. So, um, so the Indiegogo launched yesterday. Yes, we launched 2 p.m. yesterday, uh, so thank you for all the contributions. I think it's raised about $110,000 now. It's probably about 28 hours into the campaign, so just a, just over a day. And uh, maybe we'll get to the full 200000 target by tomorrow, so thank you very much for uh, supporting the project. And you know, we'll do our best to uh, create a really good job. I've been a sign user myself. And uh, we built, I built the, uh, the, the web browser on the Scion 5MX and also the Revo Plus and uh, I'm very keen to get this format back on the road. And as I can see from the market, it's uh, very much you know, something that everybody uh, is very keen. So a lot of support on the net and here at the show. And uh, the keyboard right now on this sample feels really like, uh, like the original Scion? Yeah, this is still a Scion, but it will be very similar. Actually, the row of keys on the top will be slightly longer. And the keys are slightly different, but the, the travel, you know, the travel is exactly the same. So you'll get that quality feel, quality press that hasn't been on mobile devices for quite a while. And this is kind of uh, extremely, extremely important. People are, uh, I mean, I guess I'm wondering, uh, where are the keyboards gone? Like people uh, are just using touch screens. You know, uh, we kind of uh, turning a little bit into consumer society, and it's very easy to prevent people from doing things by just having the touch and just having the consumption. And what we're trying to do is get the creative people out there again. You know, we've been communicating with text for you know hundreds of years, and uh, we're trying to bring back that creativity back yeah. in the hands of a mobile user, so you can do it on the go, not just on your laptop, but you can really do it on the go wherever you want. Get all these people to uh, do some work again. It's not, it's not just work, uh, you know, you're, cre you're creating, you're writing. Um, it's not just work, if but it can this, be done for work. If you so, you know, editing a small spreadsheet on the plane or, you know, uh, editing a document, 
uh, it's there. But it could also be just writing a nice long email to somebody, which uh, you know you can't really do properly on a on a touch screen. It's very difficult. And and most people have uh, uh, cases anyways, so it's not okay. like more it's complicated. Gold. It's a gold case. We have yeah. a gold version. You that we're that we're crowdfunding for uh, about a thousand dollars, so nice. there's there's rose gold and gold, but the usual one is three four nine for the uh, for the uh, first six hundred units, so uh, that actually meets our target. So so uh, that's real gold. It's a uh, gold plated. Gold, gold plated. plated. Yeah, real gold. Real gold plated. <laughs> that that's actually exciting because all these virtue and weird brands that do luxury phones. Are not very exciting. This is ex this should be sold like in the you know in the. So I agree. You know we should put it in a very luxury. It, it's going to be a luxury brand, and we want to have it luxury. But, but you're the we're half price a, of an iPhone. Uh, at the it it's at on the, on the crowdfunding yes, but the the, the street price will be um, uh, much more. So it will be more on the sort of five hundred five 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 nine nine 599 level. Yeah. Five yeah. nine nine level. Yeah. So it's very important to have a nice. Uh, but well, have a look at a, have a look the at the hinge because this is really we're very proud of this. So as I open the the device, the hinge opens up and creates a little stand for the device. So this is uh, extremely. Uh, this is the really cool thing that you create this little stand and then when you fold it back, you know it's basically uh, it basically goes back like this. So this is really a magic hinge again by Martin Ridderford, who's the designer of the original Scion 5MX. And uh, uh, so you were involved in doing the, what do you say, browser? We did the web browser for the Scion 5 and the Revo, a Scion Revo Plus. When was that? I'm in the late 90s. Late 90s. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so this is going to be, uh, this is going to be huge, right? People are very excited. There's a lot of articles. Uh, we're already. very excited. Um, I'm, you know, we're excited. We're really happy about the support and, uh, you know, uh, the more support we get, the better device we'll make. So, but it's also very important to uh, to get all the technology right and, and stable. And I, in the picture, I saw some some people were holding it like this. To uh, yes, there's a speaker. It's gonna actually, be a microphone speaker. Yeah, again. there's a there's a there's a there's a microphone around here, and the speaker. You can see the speaker kind of dots there, and there's also a voice assist button that you can do voice commands without opening the unit. So you can uh, you can also hold it up like as a phone, kind of. Uh, it's a speaker phone, but you can use Bluetooth or headphones as well. So you know, there's a there's a headphone slot here, and you can use Bluetooth as well. You you can't quite hold it uh, like this, yeah, can, like this. Know, it's still a, Maybe a little bit. It's still gonna operate. Like you could hold it, you could hold it like this. Uh, you could hold it like this, and but it's still gonna be a speaker phone. So it will, it, you know, it can lower the volume and potentially talk like this if you really needed to. But we still see it as a all-in-one device, but also potentially as a secondary device where you have a phone. So it's an all-in-one device, you can make calls on it uh, for on the 4G version. The real productive people have anyway is Bluetooth headsets, right? Bluetooth headset or just headphones will do. It's fine, like a headset headphone, you know, it's fine. And uh, there's a DecaCore MediaTek, right? Yes, Ten -core. This, is in, this is in our preliminary spec, DecaCore. Uh, MediaTek X25 with the Malico processor for graphics and 64 gigs of storage, 4 gigs of RAM. It's fantastic. Uh, micro SD? Uh, micro SD, yes. Yeah. yes. Micro SD micro slot? SD and then something else that we're trying to put in, which is a, a SIM slot, normal SIM slot, but also an eSIM slot. So, you know, the eSIMs, that means you can download your phone number, you can have multiple phone numbers. We're trying to experiment with that, so we'll see how that goes as well. That's nice. So you don't even need to have a phone number. You can just get uh, onto you download your phone number into the secondary SIM slot. Uh, but we we still yet to confirm exactly those features. You need to have dual standby maybe to support that or something. We'll that's see. up to we'll I guess. We, you, you know, this is uh, it's either going to operate as a single e SIM SIM slot. We're not sure about that, but it will definitely have an e SIM and a SIM slot as a as a combination of of a type. I'd like to see uh, multiple SD card slots. Like, I'd like we, to we, we thought about that. Four. We thought about that, but basically because the SD slot is hidden behind here, when you open this part, it's hidden behind there. Yeah. Uh, we thought that, let's say, having two slots for copying is not as is not as easy to do because they're hidden behind here. It's not so quite we, for copying. We, it's just we, more storage. We, I don't we, have 500 gigs, you know. 
we, we removed that feature right now. And there's a huge battery, you, you talk about a huge Yeah, it's eight 8,000 milliamp hour battery, which will be just below the keyboard all the way through the device. So that's like a week's battery life? Or two, two weeks standby, that's the plan. <laughs> two weeks standby, all right, weeks vibration? Standby. Sorry? Vibrate, it's gonna vibrate. Uh, there'll be something, yes, there'll yeah. be something. We haven't got that feature um, implemented yet. Implemented yet, and we don't know the exact uh, vibrate uh, circuit. Yeah. But uh, it has to do something. There will definitely be a feedback, user feedback. So it can be a multi-color LED or a vibration. There is definitely feedback. something. Yeah, there'll yeah. be external feedback. But you can if you put in the silent mode in your pocket. You need to be able to feel it. Yes, yeah. that's right. Yes, yes. All right. Uh, and then uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, so let's hope tomorrow it's fully funded. How soon uh, is it shipping? That would be great. Uh, the first units are shipping in November. So this is what we're expecting. Estimated date. November, sometime in November. Is there any chance you can do it sooner? No, because we, we try to do the timeline so that we can actually do it rather than have delays or something. We're trying to get the timeline right. It will take us about four months for the uh, circuitry and uh, then we need to tool up for the production and uh, the software is done in parallel with that. So we think uh, then there's some testing for the mobile networks. So the schedule, yeah. certification, so you know, the certification on its own will take a bit of time. So this is kind of where where yeah. the, the dates kind of end up, November for the first uh, early bird backers. Because if there's no CE certification, uh, the German uh, customs are going to send it back to wherever it comes from. Oh, no, from. no, uh, absolutely CE certification, but you know, there's mobile certification as well as the, just the CE compliance. CE compliance, uh, rate, the, the electromagnetic testing, EMC testing, is one part of it. But you know, it looks nice. There's a lot of work when it comes to things like that. There's a lot of work still behind the go, scenes. Right? Yes, it's not, it's we not announced it as a concept, not a prototype. So we announced it as a concept, and you know, that's where we are. And uh, we we're really pleased about the backing. And uh, do you put the antennas on the ends? Of course, and you can see these parts are not metal, so you get good reception, right? It's not all metal, so you're gonna be and so that, USB that's, Type C. Two USB-C, one, one on each side. Yeah. Is that supported by the MediaTek? Uh, we'll figure it out. We'll get it You'll done. Figure it out. Yeah, so because there's a. Don't forget, there's a. You can USB-C is like a. USB-C is like a. You can make. You can make a little hub, right? So why not have two like this? You know. Display port. Output. Yes, yes. Display outside with the hub, display not port. without the hub. Yes. So display outside. Display. Display. No need for the hub. You just directly to the display. No, no, no. It's not. No, you need a hub. You, you will need, need a hub. hub. You need a little hub. Yes. All right. All right. That's cool. Uh, so an LTE uh, fast LTE, right? Uh, that's including so, the deck. Uh, the, the, there's a preliminary spec on the net on the bands and so on. You can find it on the Indiegogo page. The issue with uh, the media there's quite sometimes. a few. Sometimes it's not so good in the U.S. Uh, there's been some improvements on that recently. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. There's been some uh, certification. There's now four MediaTek devices, at least four MediaTek devices that we know that have now been approved so in the U.S. So hopefully it works fine in the U.S. A, you know, on certain networks, yes. And we hope, uh, you know, we'll, we'll we'll bring out some more details on that. But we know that there's like four phones now operating in the U.S. and. Uh, with a MediaTek chipset. And NFC, uh, removable battery? No, no removable, not removable battery, yes. No, removable, removable battery, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Uh, NFC, not in this version. Not in this version. We'll see, because it's metallic. A lot of uh, no, you can put it here. You know, you can put it here. We have to see. You can have NFC in your watch anyways. Just get yeah, a smart you know, watch. We'll, we'll, see. We'll, see how, we'll see how that goes. You need the supporting software. There's a certain timeline. For NFC, you need supporting software. There's a certain timeline, so we know what we can do in the time. So what's your background, uh, the, the team? What are you doing? Uh, uh, well, uh, my background is in computer science, uh, neural networks and telecom. I've worked with first SMS uh, services, some of the first WAP. We wrote the first WAP application for Ericsson. Uh, I launched the first app store in the world, which was MidlandCentral.com for Java games. Uh, and I launched some of the first personal cloud services in the world. And this is kind of one of the things that I've been missing for many years. Um, Davide? Yes, uh, I'm also coming from the computer science um, side, uh, artificial intelligence as well. And I work with Yanko since 2008, and we work on software mainly. So I work on the uh, personal cloud 
which we uh, provide to several uh, telecom operators around the world, plus other innovation projects that we've done uh, during the years. Cool. And what do you do? Uh, so my background is in finance and accounting, and then pr uh, post that, it's all been in manufacturing of consumer electronic goods. Um, cool. So getting it real. Getting it real, making it's it happen. It's very important to make it happen. That's the thing. Yeah. Kind of like what Tim Cook is, his background, right? Exactly. Like, uh, What's it called? Uh, uh, the engineering yeah. that needs to happen to get the factory so, to make so it right. I mean, getting, getting the backers to back the project is one thing, and we're extremely grateful for having them on side. Then the real work starts, and that's where the fun and game starts, and we're committed to make this thing happen. So if it becomes a huge, huge, uh, even more huge success, and people more talk about it, what's going to happen with the team? You need more people, right? Yes, and don't forget, you're not seeing the design team here. The design team back in London, and you know, they're very, very excited about what's been going on here. Uh, so you know, it's uh, and you know, they've come up with this whole model, and we really love it. And uh, you know, now we're going to make it a reality, hopefully, with the backing. I've been coming to Mobile Congress for eight years in a row, and every time Samsung, all these companies, is, is like uh, disappointing. They're not coming with interesting stuff. The form factors are the same, and they're aimed at the consumer. We're really trying to aim this at the creative person, so create and organize rather than to, you know, just have a tablet that can do anything. I think this is what this will be a very, very uh, geared device towards the creative people in society.